Welcome to the Big Blue Radio Show, coming to you on Tulsa Community College's online radio station, The Grid, and on the Creativity Channel. I'm Greg Stone, Provost of TCC's Metro Campus. And I'm Lee Goodson, President of Tulsa Community College. A safe and secure environment is necessary for teaching and learning to take place. Today we visit with TCC's new Director of Emergency Preparedness to learn more about how the college keeps our students and employees safe, both in and out of the classroom. Heather Hancock is our guest today on the Big Blue Radio Show. Heather Hancock, thank you for joining us today. We're, we're just so glad to have you here. And uh, you're in a new role at yes. Tulsa Community College. And... Um, but you came from student affairs, and yes. I came from student affairs yep. also. So it seems well, like we have, yeah, <laughs> we have just sometimes we bring a different perspective that uh, some of our other colleagues may not be familiar with. Talk to us about how your dean of students role at Southeast Campus has prepared you. Well, um, my 20 years of higher ed, um, dean here and somewhere else. The Dean's Office, you get to see lots of things. Um, you get to work with the most elite students, and then you get to work with students that have barriers. Mm -hmm. And I found that one of my strengths was really working with some of those that had barriers. Um, mm -hmm. So from very early on, I have had a passion to really try to see how I can help them really kind of overcome some of those things. Um, and in the Dean's Office, that was a great fit. Um, and this role is a great fit, too, as well. So. Um, and then with the Dean of Student Services Office, you're always changing, a lot of stuff is going on. Um, and as well in my new role, having three kind of different responsibilities, there's always things going on. So um, managing different tasks and multitasking has helped me tremendously. Mm -hmm. Just to follow up real quick, can you, so uh, emergency preparedness and Title IX. Yes, um, and, and threat management. And mm -hmm. threat management. So talk about how those are different and then also what brings them together? Why is it, why are those all with three. one person? All three of them, if you'll line them out, really an, an institution wants to be in a very proactive, preventative place. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all three of those, that's where every school wants to operate. Um, and we'd really never dedicated someone to look at those things. And so now, you know, we can practice responses, but really in those three areas, we want to practice prevention. And so that's what I'm hoping to do in this role is for more people to kind of own safety and get excited about it and really have a cultural shift about how important safety is. And all three of those, emergency management, Title IX, and threat management, is safety is the underlining foundation. Mm -hmm. So. And really, Heather, emergency preparedness is something that I feel like in the last few years, I mean, it's always been something that's been important in higher ed, but there's something has changed. Mm -hmm. Something is elevated that really is sort of raising the bar in terms of how prepared institutions need to be. How did your role, your new role come about? I mean, was there a particular incident that sort of sort of sparked this realization that we need to, to do something or are we just really looking ahead to being as prepared as possible for what may come down the road? Well, in 2007, when Virginia Tech happened, I was changed that day. I, I was changed um, as a higher ed individual. And I remember walking down the hallway thinking I could have to be calling that parent's mother. That And I said, right. you know, we've got to do something different, and that just can't happen here. So I've thrown myself into the threat management, um, active shooter, all of those things I've just had a passion for. Um, and, if, and, and I hate that an institution has to do that, but as you see in our world, there's more and more of that happening. Mm -hmm. um, and again, where they intersect, Title IX is for discrimination on the basis of sex and gender. Well, some of those things that are intersecting is violence against those mm -hmm. areas, which is in the emergency preparedness as well. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where they continue to intersect. Talk about how safe our students and employees are right now. Well, I'm really glad that you asked that. And this is something that I like to tell people. There are still colleges that do not have CLEAT certified police officers which is, I'm so thankful that we do. And maybe um, for people who don't know what CLEAT is, right. can, you, can, yeah. you, just can you quickly? Can describe that? Yeah. yeah, so we have officers that are certified and that they do carry weapons. Some schools have not gotten there yet. 
Um, not just security guards. They're not security guards. They are guards. police officers. They are, and yeah. we have a, a true police department. Mm -hmm. And so if we are at Walmart, there's a response of maybe six to eight, maybe 12 minutes. Here, there's a response of two to maybe three, hopefully less than that, because we have people on already in our communities. Um, in a lot of the local police departments for CLEAT, you're only required one time of year to do certain training. We require it every single month. So we are asking more of our officers, um, much more training, much more preparedness than even a local police department is. So if you are on TCC um, campus at any of our locations, we have officers there that are more trained um, than some of our other areas are. So I feel like we would have a quick response and they're always walking around and again, that preventative thing. Mm -hmm. I think they're always trying to be preventive as well. So those two. So we're really taking steps to be huge steps. I mean, to be I, out in front with the solution and rather the, than being reactive. Yeah. The mm -hmm. last five years is when we've really started to get, we need a true police department. They need their own uniforms that people mm -hmm. can tell their TCC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've really upped that. And I think it's um, very much worth our while. To and Heather too, that. one of the things I appreciate about your advocacy for these issues, even before you were in this role, mm -hmm. because you were very heavily involved, even as Dean of Student Services at Southeast, you're always the first to say, but we're not there yet, mm -hmm. but there's always room for improvement. Always, that that yes. even if we, we're requiring more of our campus police officers, we don't need to sit back and sort of rest on that. There's always a next step to go to. So I appreciate Absolutely. your diligence you. about that. And does that, does that, is there a point where you feel like you're prepared enough? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. It um, seems like just with social media mm -hmm. and the different technology, everything's changing. Everything's like, changing all the time, like so it's when... not possible to 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 get out ahead of it. Really. And the sad reality is, after every incident, we learn something. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. the or Orlando incident, we've learned some things. Mm -hmm. After every one, so then we need to step back and go, okay, from what we thought there, is that still what's the best? And so always doing that assessment to make sure it really right. truly is the mm -hmm. best. Um, and in some ways too, I think it's appropriate that in higher ed that we do that because really what we're here to do is equip people to have experiences and then to evaluate them and make tough decisions and have sometimes difficult conversations about really challenging issues and then finding solutions to those problems. I mean, I feel like yes. at the core, that's what mm -hmm. higher ed is supposed to do. Yeah. Even and when that, it's uncomfortable. And, and that they change. Our students exactly. change. Our cultures are changing. They do. And that we are really on the cusp of really saying, okay, what's the next thing? We know that there will be a next thing. And so we're always looking to see what that and is. And that's where the training really mm -hmm. makes a difference for our campus police officers mm -hmm. and that our communities are trained mm -hmm. unfortunately when sometimes when bad things happen we are right where the incident's going to happen mm -hmm. so we all need to have the mindset to know what we would do mm -hmm. um, and then but knowing police will get there quickly let's let's sort of shift to title nine yeah because obviously another issue that's been in the news a lot in the yeah. last few years um, can you give us an overview for someone who maybe isn't familiar with what Title IX is? Maybe they've heard that term and they know it's about uh, violence or discrimination against um, someone based on issues like you mentioned of gender, sex, any number of other issues. Talk to us about um, what your responsibilities are in terms of Title IX compliance for the college. Well, I like to play this game, and I don't know if it's a great game, but I was just at an airport, and I like to ask people, what is, what is Title IX to you? And people still think, oh, it's where women can play sports. I mean, mm -hmm. that is still what people think that it yeah, is. They yeah. still think it's the equality exactly. and the sports investment. Yeah. And um, it has evolved so hugely in the fi last five or six years. But Title IX is from the Office of Civil Rights, which is from the Office, um, the Department of Ed, that talks about discrimination on the ba basis of sex and gender. And really providing an opportunity and an environment to be discrimination free. People have the right, we deserve the right, all of us, employees and students, to work at TCC without being harassed or be in an environment that is uncomfortable. We just deserve that right. And that's why Department of Ed says, yes, you do. 
So um, now we would like a Title IX coordinator from every school to make sure that that's what we're trying to do and to oversee those processes. And so, and the Title IX coordinator is an official title. It is. Talk to us about what that means at each institution according to the Department of Education. So the Department of Ed says, okay, since everybody in higher ed, we like to call things all these different things. Let's, you know, there's- We do. We just, we love And we names. love acronyms. Yes, we yes. love all these things. So they just said, okay. So we all, everybody knows what we're all talking about. We're all gonna say a Title IX coordinator. Well, coordinator in higher ed kind of means a different role, but a, the coordinator thing actually means coordinating. Mm -hmm. So this individual is supposed to be coordinating um, remedies, um, responses to issues, prevention, but to oversee the whole thing that from the Department of Ed requirements. They require certain training, they re require people to report, and all of those kinds of things. And so my role is to make sure all of those things are happening at TCC. So are you actually part of the response team? Should we yes. have a Title IX incident? Yes. You are? Yeah. And you actually coordinate that and lead that? Yes. I yes. see. Okay. And so, and if there was an incident to occur, it would, um, if it gets to the Department of Ed, they would contact our president, and then the president and I would get together and we'd figure out what we would do next about that. So, um, kind of the person that's holding it, and I absolutely know what's going on. These are all the things that we've been doing to make sure we've coordinated all of those things. But this, the distinction is <clears throat> important that it's not just your responsibility though, Absolutely. right? It's, it's no. everyone's responsibility yes. to report harassment, dis uh, discrimination, um, violence in the workplace, um, and that's something that I know that you're actively working on in terms of helping to provide training for employees, both faculty and staff, and students as well, mm -hmm. to know what, you, what steps to take when you see something that, that shouldn't Absolutely. be going on. And the thing that I love about Title IX is that it is still not a female thing. People think, oh, this is to protect females. This Just is to protect all of us. Right. Um, and so it is about, um, even if you are an accused person, it's fair to be fair and equitable to both parties to make sure that we can do what's in the best interest of I our think, community. I think people would be surprised at, at the, you know, you're right, people think it's 100% about women and protecting Absolutely. women. I think people would be surprised that it's not. at the incidences that yeah. aren't about no. uh, protecting and, women. And I hope mm -hmm. we can provide an environment that males feel comfortable to come forward and say, mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we can mm -hmm. get there because that's what we should be doing for everyone to feel comfortable. Speaking of that, talk to us. You and I knew each other when we yes. were both in student affairs yep. and we both worked at Oklahoma State and we were working on the strategic plan yes. for ever forever <laughs> yes. felt like. yeah. no it was a good process <laughs> yes, and, we, and we got to know each other but um, talk to us about the history how, how what's changed how far do you think we've come have we made progress in terms of being able to respond to students and students having um, a, a comfortable learning environment I just got a call my way over here that there was some students on campus last Friday or the Friday before, mm -hmm. an alarm went off um, and it was a malfunction of some sort. They responded, They so whenever um, people went to go look for them, they couldn't find them. Well, they were hidden in the very back. Wow. And they were scared where they had gone, but they had done exactly what we have been training to do. We still have mm -hmm. um, a ways to go, but we have come so far of people right. knowing how to respond quickly and knowing what to do. Um, but we're gonna continue to do more and more of that. The more we hear it, the more we're gonna feel comfortable and when, mm -hmm. you know. It becomes habit. It does. It and, has to become And the habit. best defense is a good offense. Absolutely. Yeah. That yeah. prevention piece of figuring out, so. Before we get to the, to the, to the big question that we ask all of our guests, I did want to ask if you could just give all of us a couple of quick things that we can all do to make sure that, that we're safe in the classroom, safe in the workplace. What are those things that, that we all just need to be able to sort of quickly tick through our head and to make sure that we're as safe as we can be? Well, I think the number one thing is to look around our surroundings. I still walk and I see people on their phones constantly because we are just pulled into that world. We're all mm -hmm. so busy. Um, and I actually had an incident this weekend that a gentleman got on an elevator with me and I did not feel comfortable. And so I got off the elevator. Um, but I had been watching him, he had been following me, and I thought, no, I'm gonna own this and I, um, I, I'm just not gonna get on. And so I want people to own it and feel confident. Many of us tell ourselves this story, oh, it's nothing and I'm gonna look stupid if I do something. And I just wanna tell people, it's 
okay, what if you look stupid? It's okay, okay. but you're safe. Yeah, um, you're so I want, I mean, that would be my number one thing to always be looking at your surroundings. If something feels off, please tell somebody, please respond and tell somebody. So that would probably be my number one thing to do. Um, and then if you do see something of how, how much we just have a responsibility to make sure everybody can be safe is to really come and tell somebody, your supervisor, HR, mm -hmm. campus police, um, because we want to help everyone in our community. It's not punitive. We don't want to se seek out people to get in trouble. We want to help people and grow people in that. Sometimes you make not the best decisions and then we can help them improve from that. Employees and students, you know, yeah. so those are, and practicing, I cannot say enough. Practice, yeah. practice, yeah. practice. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So it will come second nature when something happens and you don't freeze. You know, a lot of people say there's fight or flight. There's actually a third one and it's fight or fight or freeze. Mm -hmm. and wow. Many right. people use freeze just because your mind's like, wait a minute, have I seen this? Have I seen this? And oh yeah, this is not good. I need to respond. And you've mm -hmm. lost two to three seconds there, you right. know. Yeah. So right. that's our goal that people do fight or flight actually. That'd be great instead of the freeze. Would be good. Yeah. yeah. So we always uh, wrap the show up with one final, Okay. Uh, we call it the big question okay. on the Big Blue Radio Show, and that is, if you could give advice to your 18-year-old self coming out of high school, what advice would you tell yourself, uh, knowing what you know now? Knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. um, and this one's really easy for me, and I guess I would even change it, which you would always say, don't ever change anything, but I really wish I would have been more involved in community service mm -hmm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot in my high school years, but in college, first generation, I just didn't have time. I didn't cut out time for that two to three jobs, college, sure. and then the next thing I know, I'm in, you know, in this, and I look back and go, oh, I missed so many years of really doing community service. And so I, my younger self, I'd say, cut that time out. It's just like workout time. It's so important. Um, it reminds us why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be my number one thing. I wish that I would have really focused a little bit more time on that. Well, thanks for that great advice, Heather. And that's all the time we have for today, but we do want to thank our guest, Heather Hancock, for joining us on the show. And thank you for being here, too. Remember, you can find us every week online at The Grid, tulsacc.edu slash The Grid, and on the Creativity Channel. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.